And we're back here on Afternoon Drive. Matt Hatfield here with you on Priority Auto Sports Radio 94.1. It's your home for Old Dominion football and so much more college football. We take you all the way through the college football playoff. And who better to have on to preview the season here in July than the guru himself, Phil Steele. Go check out his website, philsteele.com, and get his magazine. It's the very best, all glossy color pages. Every team you want to know about, this guy's got all the stats, the figures, the info, the forecast. It's extraordinary. And Phil, uh, we left off, we talked about some of the teams in the Commonwealth earlier, but I want to talk about a team that really... There's fans everywhere across the country, not just in South Bend, Indiana, Notre Dame. Give us your feelings on the Fighting Irish with a new quarterback from the ACC, formerly in Wake Forest, is Sam Hartman. Yeah, and I, I like Notre Dame's chances. Uh, it, when I did the uh, first write through of the magazine, which was prior to some transfer portals, but once Sam Hartman landed there, look out because remember last year, Tyler Buckner was a starting quarterback. Then he got injured, so they were with a backup quarterback the majority of the year. And I don't think Drew Pine is as good as Buckner, and he definitely is as good as Sam Hartman. Sam Hartman's one of the top quarterbacks in the country, and comes into this offense, and he's got. A running back heavy team. I mean, uh, Audric Esteem, Price, Ford, Love, they're so deep in the backfield. They moved Chris Tyree, their number three rusher from last year, into the slot to help out a receiver. You look at that offensive line, it's one of the best in the country. The defense is outstanding. And this team started out slow last year at 0 and 2, but then went 9 and 2 down the stretch, including the bowl win. I think Marcus Freeman in his third, uh, second year. We'll have a, a much better season. And in fact, I not only have them in the top ten, I think they're a legitimate national title contender. They get Ohio State at home. They get USC at home. And I could see them winning both those games. The only game all season I have an underdog is at Clemson. And even if they lose that game, they still would have a great shot of making it into the playoff. So watch out for the Irish this year. Yeah, three teams that could be top 10 opponents there with Ohio State, Southern Cal, Clemson. But they've had a track record of performing well, including that game a couple years back when they beat Clemson. I know Trevor Lawrence was on the shelf there. But uh, speaking of Clemson, ACC here, I've heard the debate. Who's better, Clemson, Florida State? How about you, Phil? Where do you land right now? It seems like the Seminoles are trending upward, though. Yeah, I can tell you that uh, Florida State's going to be uh, picked number one by the media in the in the preseason and be higher ranked in the AP top ten by the media. And and really, there is talent there. And what a difference a year makes for Florida State. I remember last year talking to Coach Mike Norvell in his third season, and I'm wondering, I wonder if I'm going to talk to Mike Norvell in his fourth season here at Florida State because they were off two losing seasons at three and six and five and seven. And look what happened. Not only ten and three last year. But they were the best team in the ACC power rating-wise at the end of the year. They had three close losses, dominated teams. They had a plus 162 yards per game in ACC play and 17 starters back, plus a lot of uh, transfers coming in. It's a loaded Florida State team. However, I went with Clemson to win the ACC this year. And, you know, when I was talking to Coach Sweeney, going over the squad with them, he said to me about the defensive line that this group doesn't have the star power of 2018, but this group is deeper in talent and experience. And that sort of made me, I mean, I like this defensive line coming in, but for him to say that this group's deeper in talent and experience in 2018, look out. Now they've got Kate Klubnick, a quarterback, a couple of very solid running backs, and Will Shipley and Phil Maffa, a veteran offensive line. And then when you look at Clemson's schedule, the toughest two games, Florida State, Notre Dame, guess what? Both are at home. I've got Clemson favored in all 12 games this year. I've got them ranked number two in the country. So as Florida State will be the ACC media pick, I've got Clemson my pick to win the ACC this year. Wow, how about that? And that's very high praise from Dabo Sweeney there. And Phil tends to get these right when he goes out on a limb there. A lot of people picking FSU, as you mentioned, but Clemson does look like it shakes out well for them, potentially. Uh, looking at the Big Ten, I've been doing some homework and studying on this, Phil. Tell me if I'm wrong here. Ohio State hosts Penn State, Penn State hosts Michigan, and Michigan hosts Ohio State. In a crazy way, I could see the home teams winning each of those games and it's being like a three-way tie. Is that possible? What's your, your view of the Big Ten right now where a lot of people are going back and forth between the Buckeyes and the Wolverines to represent the league playoff, maybe get two teams like a season ago. Maybe Penn, St- Penn State's that dark horse there. Yeah, and I, I agree with you 100%, Matt. In fact, you know, coming into the magazine process, uh, you know, after like the first write-through, I was like, you know, I haven't looked at the schedules yet, but whichever one of those three teams has two home games against the other two, that's the one I'm picking to win the Big Ten because talent-wise, they're all right there. They're like three, four, five in my power poll in the front of the magazine, which so it's very little separating the three teams. And then, as you mentioned, Penn State could very well beat Michigan. I mean, the last time they hosted Michigan, which was 2021, 
probably deserved to win that game. They outplayed them greatly in the first half, came up just short at the end. Now it's back in Happy Valley. They could easily get that one. Uh, it's going to be difficult, though, to win in Columbus. And Ohio State has proven they struggle against Michigan the last two years losing, and that puts Jim Harbaugh 2-1 and one against uh, Ryan Day, and we'll see what happens here. But uh, overall, I think when you take a look at this matchup, uh, it's it's one of those things where I could see all three teams tied for first as well. I went with Michigan to win the uh, the Big Ten East for the fact that uh, they play have uh, the best schedule. Yes, they play Penn State on the road, but their other road games are Nebraska, Minnesota, Michigan State. Ohio State has to play Wisconsin on the road as well as Michigan. And Penn State draws Iowa out of the West, which is a dangerous game. They also have to play Maryland and Illinois on the road. So I, I went with Michigan to win, but I tell you what, Matt, I could, I could go with any of those three to win the East. And it's wild to think, too, Phil, that the hot seat is no longer as hot as it once was for Jim Harbaugh and it's starting to get warm for Ryan Day. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. How, how things change in college football. And, you know, if you're looking for a sleeper, though, out of the Big Ten, Matt, mm-hmm. watch Wisconsin. Uh, and i got to be honest, when I, when I originally looked at it, I, I wasn't that high on Wisconsin. In fact, I was picking Iowa to win the Big Ten West in the first right through of the magazine. But the closer I looked at this squad, you know, adding Tanner Mordecai gives them a pass offense. They still have Braylon Allen and Chesmalusi. They got the big offensive line. They got eight starters back on defense as opposed to having just three last year. And their schedule is magnificent. Their road games are Purdue, Illinois, Indiana, and Minnesota. All winnable. They get Ohio State at home. Keep your eyes on Wisconsin. They're my number one surprise team in the country. Hmm, it's a good one. The Badgers tend to run the ball very, very well and always have those large offensive lines like you mentioned. So you brought it up, a sleeper. Tell us another sleeper or two that could maybe crack the playoff. And a surprise or two outside of a Power 5 league, Phil, that can be a top 10 level outfit, maybe even run the table. What do you see there? Yeah, I think Wisconsin is clearly my number one surprise team. Another one to look at would be Texas A&M. They're off a 5-7 and seven season last year, but they were among the least experienced teams in the country last year. This year, they're among the most experienced teams in the country. And keep in mind, even in their 5-7 and seven season last year, they were on Alabama's two-yard line on the road with a chance to win the game on the final play of the game. Came up four points short. And they also beat LSU last year, and LSU made it to the SEC championship game. Now they get Alabama at home, where they beat Alabama last time. Watch A&M to be a a sneaky pick uh, in that respect. And as far as the uh, non-Power 5 teams out there, UTSA is a a team that I think has a shot to to make some noise this year. They moved to the American Conference, so it's a step up in level of competition. But I tell you, Jeff Traylor is doing a remarkable job there. And they've got a guy at quarterback and Frank Harris, who I think was playing the first year of my magazine back in 1995. He's been at UTSA that long, and he just gets better every year. In fact, last year he threw for over 4,000 yards with a 32-9 to ratio. They also have a dangerous receiving core, a veteran defense. Uh, I think UTSA has that shot. Now, they do have to play Tennessee on the road and Tulane on the road, so they'll probably be an underdog in a couple of games. I don't see any of the non-Power 5 teams running the table this year. Oh, an interesting one, though. The Roadrunners of UTSA. Beep, beep. In our last couple minutes with Phil Steele, the college football guru himself. Make sure you get his magazine, and he'll also tell you what's up there on philsteele.com. It's Priority Auto Sports Radio 94.1. All right, Heisman talk, Phil. Southern Cal quarterback Caleb Williams, the reigning winner. We know the Ohio State running back Archie Griffin accomplished the feat of going back-to-back in 1974-75. And Caleb Williams trying to do that. But it brings me to a couple of things. A, if you had to go Caleb Williams or the field, where would you lean? And B, is this award essentially like the NFL MVP now, where it's almost a safe bet that a quarterback takes it, or can you legitimately see someone outside of that position take home the hardware this coming season? Uh, you know, last year I thought Blake Corum of Michigan had a chance of getting there had he not got injured in those final two games, had a big game against Ohio State. I think Blake Corum would have had a chance to get there. But it is pretty tough for any position other than quarterback to win the award. So, uh, And as far as taking Caleb Williams or the field, I'm going to take the field in this case because, you know, the Heisman quarterback is now dealing with playing against expectations. And he basically has to beat last year's stats. And last year's stats are pretty good. 4,537 yards, 67%. 42-5 ratio, pretty remarkable numbers. Now, let's say this year he has a 37-9 ratio and only throws for 4,000 yards. And everybody will be like, well, he's had a down year. And that's why it's always tough for the, the Heisman winner to uh, repeat. Now, as far as picking somebody from that field, 
uh, it's going to be tough. But I would take the field over a uh, back-to-back Heisman winner. As you mentioned, Archie Griffin, the only one to do it. Yeah, that's a great point there with uh, the expectations with quarterbacks. It's always through the roof at the pro level and, of course, even out at the college level with these named quarterbacks that are certainly the faces of their programs. Well, he is the very best, the guru. Phil still he has been so kind to give us so much time. And go get his magazine. Follow him on Twitter at P-H-I-L-S-T-E-L-E-042, over 350 pages. And, Phil, they want to subscribe to Phil Steel Plus. I was a member last year. I loved it every day, every week during the college football season. Tell the fans out there what they get when they go on your website and subscribe. You know, Phil Steel Plus is like getting the magazine every week, but updated for the the season. It gives you individual leaders uh, every week. It gives you the stats. It gives you an average game grade, which I find huge. The average game grade not only takes into account the score of the game, but the opponent, where you played them, the yards rushing, yards passing. Sometimes a losing team had a better average game grade than the winning team, and you could add that up during the course of the year. You also get complete information on all the FCS teams up there. There's over 120 of those, and they're updated weekly. It's and you could go back and get the last 45 years uh, records against the spread. It's just things you can't find anywhere else. So that's at Phil Steele Plus. And as far as the magazine goes, that's available at Barnes and Noble. Uh, right there in Virginia, has plenty of Barnes and Nobles, and uh, also if you don't find, well, you can find it at Barnes and Noble. It's at each and every one. But if you don't have one close by, you can go to philsteel.com. And when you go to philsteel.com and order the magazine, there will be a shipping charge. But the benefit is you also get the digital magazine absolutely free. And we update the digital magazine all the way through the start of September. So if a player's gone and out for the year, we'll have them circled. If anybody gets added to the page, we'll add them. Uh, we up Update that all the way through September. So get it through philsteel.com. You get the hard copy and the digital, or buy it at Barnes & Noble. That's probably your best bet. Some great perks there when you go up there on philsteel.com and get the magazine. Like you said, purchase Phil Steel Plus. You get the 2023 College Digital and the new FCS Digital Magazine free. Like you can find out info on William & Mary from nearby here in Hampton Roads, also Richmond, and so many more. Phil, it's always a pleasure. Great chatting with you. Well, thank you, Matt. Always enjoy our conversations, my friend. Thanks for having me on. That is the great Phil Steele, the college football guru himself, with us on Afternoon Drive right here on your home for sports. Pro, college, high school. Got you all covered on Priority Auto Sports Radio 94.1.